Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from the Black Business School. And um, I wanted to uh, talk about uh, the experience I had today. Um, I went to go see uh, the homie Ice Cube in the, uh, his latest installment of the film Barbershop. Um, it was a great movie. Um, I'm going to say this. I'll start with that and say I highly recommend the film. It was extraordinarily done. The storytelling was just really, really powerful. And I feel like Cube... Um, he just laid a template. He's laid a template for how to make a quality movie um, at a very at a, at an affordable price um, by filling a market niche that's ignored by Hollywood. And I'm really happy to see that Barbershop has done better than, you know, Batman, Superman and all this other stuff that where they spend one hundred million dollars blowing things up. Um, you know, he made his movies very simply, very uh, cost effectively. And uh, just told a great story, and it was culturally relevant. Um, it wasn't a bunch of coonery. It was, um, it was really, uh, you know, relevant to what people are thinking about right now. Um, it was reflective of the rising consciousness in the black community, where people are talking about the kids being killed in the street. They're talking about the political issues. They're talking about the the divides among us, uh, among you know the divides between women, the divides between men, the divides between women and men, and um, and and it was it was really. Um, it really pushed the idea of being loyal to your people and to your community. Um, I, I think that this was Ice Cube's best movie ever. It, it was abs absolutely the best thing he's ever done. And he's done a lot of great things. Uh, a lot of people don't even know. I mean, here's the thing. You know, I, I've been, and I, I don't know you guys may not know this, but I've actually been an Ice Cube fan for 20 some years. So in a way, my maturity kind of evolved along with his, actually. Um, I still remember, <clears throat> and this reflects the interesting thing I thought about when I watched this movie. Um, you know, uh, he, he's matured the way I have, you know, I remember when I first heard Ice Cube at a party when I was 17 and, uh, it was that first lyric and, um, uh, uh, I think it was straight out of Compton, you know, straight out of Compton, crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube from the gang called niggas with attitude. And I remember hearing that voice and thinking, man, wow. This guy has a hell of a voice. Who is this? You know, and, and, and nobody really had heard as, as prevalent as gangster rap is now at that time. Nobody really had even heard it, especially not in Kentucky. Right. But N.W.A. actually spread underground uh, throughout the country, you know, without any radio play. Um, and every, uh, teenagers everywhere loved it. And I remember playing people playing Easy e and N.W.A. and all that. Like, you know, when I worked at Taco Bell, uh, which is where I met my daughter's mother and, and all that, you know, the rest was history. I have a daughter now, so you know what probably happened after that. But um, anyway, you know, what was interesting to me was seeing this transition of this man, you know, kind of, you know, coming of age where he's now the father who has to deal with having a teenage son who's dealing with all the, the violence in the community. And there was kind of a clash between two groups, one wearing blue, one wearing red. And, uh, you know, the, I guess that's a reference to the whole Crips and Blood divide. And, um, and it made me think about, you know, and I saw Ice Cube as a parent trying to protect his son from all of this. Um, and it really made me think about the fact that it's very it's, it's ironic that, you know, Ice Cube was largely responsible for marketing gang culture throughout the country. Now, this is not to say that Ice Cube is at fault for the conditions, though, in South Central. Uh, what the, you know, the way I kind of see a lot of this. Um, and, uh, and, and it actually links to another thing Ice Cube brought up in the film where he was talking about we need to solve our own problems in our own community. Well, the thing is that a lot of gang culture, the violence, the drugs, all this stuff, that the drugs that drive the violence just in, in, in everything else, the, the incarceration that drives the single parent epidemic, which therefore drives, um, you know, the attraction of young males to gangs because they don't have male role models in the house. All of this um, is not created by black people. You know, South Central uh, turned into a war zone, not because of something that black people did. South Central turned into a war zone because the CIA let crack cocaine into the black community. And then the guns came to the black community. I mean, you tell me one black gun manufacturer that you know of that's supplying guns to the hood. There is no black gun manufacturer making guns in the hood. Those guns are coming from somewhere else. So I think that when we talk about solving these problems with the violence occurring in South Central or South Side Chicago, we have to really go to the root of the tree. We, you know, it's easy to say black people, we need to just stop killing each other. What's wrong with us? You know, most black people I know have never killed anybody. And I know a lot of black people. I know some pretty ratchet people, but nobody I know has ever killed anybody. And so, um, you know, when you really talk about that, you're really talking about a small faction of people that get involved in the violence, but it affects everybody. It's like a form of terrorism in a way. And where the, are the terrorists bred? Well, they're bred from a culture 
uh, where they're supplied weapons from outside the black community. And also a lot of it links to drugs and also music that is promoted by white and Jewish corporations that teaches these young black men that it's cool to be a killer. It's cool to go and, and take out you know other black people. Right. If you take those elements away, if you were to take away the, the drugs, take away the gun supply and take away the, the, the media imagery, then you would have a whole different set of incentives for the kids. You would have a whole different set of norms. Now, teenagers would still be, you know, different. I mean, you know, teenagers, uh, honestly, I read about it. Teenagers, their brains, because of the way their brains are developed, they're antisocial by definition, just because of their age. They always want to do things that are counter to what their parents are doing. This is true in every culture throughout the world. This is true for a lot of different species other than humans. So teenagers, adolescence brings with it a certain type of rebellion all the time, always, no matter what. But it becomes more dangerous dangerous when you supply weapons to this, you know, chemically imbalanced young person um, so, so that they're not able to really clearly see the long term implications of the choices that they make. And so what I really like about, you know, Ice Cube's role and Common's role in the film, Common was also in the film, is that you saw two black, strong black fathers taking pride in being dads and coming together to restore and to protect the community. That's exactly what the black community needs. We need our dads back. You know, and our dads didn't just run off, you know, before you start bashing the black man and saying, oh, y'all yes, all Negroes need to start taking care of your damn kids. They didn't run off. The police came and got them. Many of them are political prisoners. What does it mean to be a political prisoner? It means this. You commit a crime that normally would give you a sentence of a year, but because they, in, they inflict heavier damage onto uh, black communities, they give you 50 years. So therefore, your children won't have a parent in the home ever. You're disconnected from your community that needs you. So a lot of this links right back to white supremacy. And we got to understand the whole equation, because just like in mathematics, if you have five variables in an equation and you remove two and you, you're only accounting for three, what's going to happen is you're going to put extraordinary weight on the variables you see because you're not thinking about the variables you don't see. That's true mathematically. It's true in life. So what are the variables in this? Well, absolutely. Do black people play a role in what happens in our communities? Absolutely, we do. Um, are there things we can do better? There, absolutely, there are. But if you don't factor in the other variables, uh, the supply of the guns, the supplies of the drugs, police corruption, political neglect, and all these things that white folks are doing, then you, you're going to miss it. It's not going to make a whole lot of sense. Black people are going to look crazy to you. So um, I just I think that Ice Cube just, I mean, in this film, I recommend it. I think he did a great job. Uh, a lot of respect for him. A lot of people don't know he's still making good music. His music, I, I listen to his music very carefully because I follow a lot of hip hop, young and old, all that, you know, because if I'm talking about it, I need to listen to it. And I will tell you, Ice Cube is one of the most brilliant lyricists um, in history. I mean, even to this day, his music has gotten better over time. He knows the formulas. He knows how to put the right beat. He knows how to put the right lyrics. He knows just like he knows how to tell a great story, which is why he's been a successful filmmaker. So um, I think young black people who really want to understand success, I think Ice Cube's a good person to kind of look at. Uh, I think this film was just, it couldn't have been done much better. You know, and I was very proud of him. And I just wanted to express that and, and say to everybody, I think you should see this movie. Um, he did a great job. So that's it. I'm about to get out of here, guys. Uh, me and Damon Dash are about to meet up on a webinar for our class that we teach called Intelligent Boss Moves. Uh, he and I are both about the same age as Ice Cube, and so we're all in that age range where we enjoy the idea of being fathers for the whole community. We enjoy the fact that there are young people in their 20s that come and sign up for our class, and we like mentoring them You know, through through the, the internet. The internet is a, broad, a bold opportunity to either do something great or something horrible, depending on what you use it for. So IntelligentBossMoves.com, that's where our class is located. Um, also, don't forget, we are, you know, I'm we not we i'm on tour uh, with the dr boyce Watkins tour you can go to the dr boyce Watkins tour.com we're going to kansas city then we're going to baltimore then we're going to houston then we're going to um new orleans and new york and vegas and a few other places uh and then the uh last thing i wanted to tell you guys about oh damon uh well you know what dame just gave me some good news about his television network but you know what i'm gonna let him tell you because i didn't realize it that uh his his um his wifey for life iraqi who runs his business she didn't actually explain say I could tell people so I'm gonna zip it up just to be respectful but uh, but later on I hope that he announces it but I one, one thing I can announce that Damon and I are working on is that he um, myself and Kanye West are co-executive it's co-executive producing a, a film called too honorable um, that's gonna come out pretty soon and uh, if you saw paid in full and some of Dame's other movies you know he's a good storyteller as well so I'm excited about that well I'm about to get out of here guys I uh, love you and I'll talk to you soon take care peace <laughs>